Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is calling for stronger air defenses in the northeastern region of Kharkiv after a Russian missile attack today killed six people and injured 11 more. This week, NATO allies agreed to look for more air defense systems to send to Ukraine. Let's talk more about this with our next guest, CNN's military analyst Cedric Layton, a retired colonel in the U.S. Air Force. Um, colonel Layton, it's always great to have you on. Right now, Ukraine is short on troops and ammunition. Is there an opportunity to win on the battle? Is there opportunity to win on the battlefield slipping away? Well, Jessica, it's good to be with you. And uh, it, it's, uh, you know, pains me to say this, but yes, uh, if the Ukrainians don't get the aid that they need, it's going to be a real problem for them because at this particular point in time, we're looking at munitions shortages, weapons shortages, troop shortages, things that you've basically outlined that President Zelensky has talked about. And those things are very difficult to overcome if you don't have some way of resupplying. And that's going to, I think, be the critical factor for this year and possibly the next year as well. Mm. And this week, Denmark said work is now underway to begin a plan to donate F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine this summer. What kind of impact could that have for Ukraine? So in a localized sense, it could have a significant impact in specific areas of the front lines. Uh, but in the aggregate, the one thing that they have to watch out for, Jessica, is the fact that the Russians are going to respond to this. And they're going to do this in several different ways. One of them is through electronic warfare, specifically jamming. Uh, so hopefully the Ukrainian pilots that have been trained on the F-16 uh, have learned to operate the platform in a jamming environment. And if that's the case, then they at least have a chance to succeed and do some good work for uh, the Ukrainian ground forces who need, of course, all the help that they can get. And so also we look here to the U.S. where the $60 billion in aid is now hung up in Congress. And, and truly, who knows where that's going to go? It had passed the Senate and now it is just lingering in the House. Uh, does Kiev have a plan B in case that $60 billion never gets to them because it never gets out of Congress? Yeah, that's going to be, I think, a, a really big issue here. So the answer, I think, is that uh, Kiev may have a bit of a plan B. That plan B is not something that's going to be as robust as that $60 billion. Uh, and there's also, of course, a possibility, as you know, that uh, that $60 billion figure could be curtailed as it goes through the House, uh, if, it, if it even makes it. Uh, so this is going to be a significant issue for them, and it's uh, going to be something where we have to see whether or not Congress actually steps up to the plate and does what it needs to do in order to protect our vital strategic interests, which actually are in Ukraine at this point. And as this war just continues to, to drag on and the Ukrainians continue to, to, to dig in and really just grind it out best they can, what do you think is the right expectation at this point for Ukrainians on where this war goes now? Well, I think one of the things that, uh, you know, kind of dampened expectation was the failure of the counteroffensive this past summer uh, to actually achieve significant gains on the ground. I, we kind of were conditioned to have those great successes when the Ukrainian forces saved Kyiv and they were able to protect Kharkiv and also recapture Kherson. Uh, those particular things were significant achievements. The problem is they needed to keep the momentum going. And because of the way Western aid was provided, or in this case not provided, in a timely fashion, that made a, a big difference and that prevented the Ukrainians in part from succeeding. The other part, of course, was also tactics and the types of tactics that the Ukrainians used uh, were basically tactics that they had adapted in some ways part from us, but also in part from the Soviet days when they were part of the Soviet Union. And those tactics did not work against a foe that was able to get entrenched to actually stabilize the front lines in their favor. And that really prevented things from going forward the way the Ukrainians wanted to. The Russians, in essence, learned from their mistakes in the past, and they'll continue to learn from them if we don't have rapid uh, capabilities deployed to Ukraine and, and, and uh, at this particular point. Yeah. What kind of options does Zelensky have moving forward? How, how does he get out of this? 
So this is going to be really difficult because all of the different things that are open to him at this particular point, if you can't move your forces forward, if you can't do the things that you were able to do in the past, you're kind of boxed into a series of solutions. And those might include uh, basically keeping the front lines as they are, which would be politically unpalatable uh, to Zelensky and as far as we know to the Ukrainian people as well. Uh, there is the possibility that uh, Ukraine could achieve some localized gains and capitalize on those. Uh, but in essence, what we're looking at so far, unless there's a dramatic change on the battlefield, is in essence the status quo, which would be somewhat akin to the solution that was achieved in Korea uh, after the Korean War uh, ended. So in essence, you had a static uh, front line that has been in existence since 1953. In that particular case, we could see something similar to that in Ukraine. It's not a good solution. And it's certainly not something that is satisfactory to Ukrainians or to their Western backers. Uh, but that might be the case unless there's a drastic change in how uh, the Russians uh, supply their forces. And if uh, there's a way to uh, cut those supply lines, then that could potentially change things. But until that happens, uh, there uh, is basically a very little that the Ukrainians can do except to hold on. And that's mm. going to be tough. Mm. All right, Cedric Layton, always great to have you on. Thanks so much. Good to see you.